Good evening and welcome back to Byline. This is a public affairs show uh, sponsored by the Amherst League of Women Voters and uh, we are here in the studios of uh, Amherst Media on College Street here in Amherst and uh, we're continuing our series of conversations with committee chairs and vice chairs about uh, various things that are happening and today we're going to be talking with Alyssa Brewer who's the chair of a committee and Kathy Shane who's the vice chair of a committee and it's the same committee, but it's a committee that's going out of business. How do you like that? They finished their job, they're going to go out of business. And we finished it early. And you finished it early that's on right. time and on budget. Right. You got it. <laughs> so what was the name of the committee? The Committee on? Rules of Procedure. Rules of Procedure. So Sounds give us a, a reminder about why this committee got set up where its authority came from, et cetera. Right. So Stan asked me to speak about this briefly, and I was like, okay, like an hour and a half, right? Um, <laughs> no, no, so <laughs> really briefly. <laughs> really briefly. So the charter requires rules of procedure to be set up for the council. Our old charter didn't have that for town meeting. Town meeting had town meeting time. It was done a different way. The legislature, the great and general court does it a different way. But our charter specifically said the council has to have rules of procedure. They, at minimum, have to include these few topics. One was, for example, that there has to be public comment at every regular meeting. That's not something that's required by Mass General Law, but the people who wrote the charter and the people who voted in the charter wanted to be part of our town government. There has to be at least one meeting a month. There has to be a recording of all votes unless they are unanimous votes. It has to be by name. And so there was a minimum set of rules. Of course, it was very short in the charter, and we came up with a very large document of rules because what we're trying to do is not only have it be a reference for counselors as to how things work, but also for the public because this is really a, you know, a sea change in how we're doing town government in Amherst. It's the biggest change we've made since 1954. And so people don't know why we're doing what we're doing. Sometimes we are struggling with why we're doing what we're doing at any given moment. And so having a ready reference new. document. Yeah. Because it, the, one of the things to keep in mind is, of course, professional staff continues to do their job every day. Yeah. But at the same time, the elected officials are trying to find different ways and different structures to make it accessible both to us, not just to put a document on a shelf and say, ah, we did that, done but something we can refer to and that's why it's important to have things like how many votes do we need for certain things to be in there in addition to being written in our charter a handy reference for all mm -hmm. and, and, and this isn't the first edition because we had some interim rules and no. uh, so Kathy you, sure. can you yeah, share? And it, as Alyssa said you know we had some basic how are we going to start uh, because we had to have some well, how are we going to start based on the charter so we did codify those but then when we turned to looking at what is the purpose of this we said it's a really statement of our values uh, what do we value as a town what do we value as town council and how are we going to conduct ourselves mm -hmm. to adhere to those values in fact we even have an appendix that's called a value statement mm. you know uh, what what are things we believe in so it was uh, it ended up being quite a research project for us, mm -hmm. too, because as we said, okay, we're brand new. Let's look at across towns and cities that have a council form of government with or without a mayor, mm -hmm. you know, look like us or a little different. And what you saw is if we looked at 30 plus, is many of them had a core set that was the same. As Alyssa said, how many votes do we need to do X, Y, and Z? Mm -hmm. How do you make a motion? But then there were variations, and that's where we honed in on a what specific do we want in Amherst, and what do we not find anywhere that we might want? So it was a quite a creative process as we got into yeah. it. So let's stick with that theme for a minute about the value statement. So the charter's pretty clear that we want a transparent and engaged, we want a transparent government and engaged citizenry. How do the rules relate to that? Exactly. Well, it is actually the opening sentences of our rules. Um, so it I says, just I just thought I'd bring them here as a Amherst Town Council commits to the highest levels of inclusion, openness, and transparency in its meetings and deliberation. You know, so we made that a strong statement, and then we said wherever possible, we want robust public participation and deliberations. And mm -hmm. we have a variety of. Uh, 
activities that were written into the charter, such as districts should have district council meetings at least twice a year, and we're mm -hmm. doing them more often, or we're going to do a public forum on the budget, on capital, on uh, the master plan. But we said beyond what we have to do, because the charter said, let's talk about a way of bringing the public into council discussions. And as just a couple examples, we've set up something called a work session that we haven't used yet. But it's a time that the council can invite other people in who have expertise, say we want to talk about the master plan. I hear you talked about that mm -hmm. earlier. But we're not making a decision. We just want to have a strong conversation about it. We can set up a work session mm -hmm. to think through the issues. We've also set up for our committees or for the full council something called a study group or work group where we're going to do something on an issue, but we want to know the pluses and minuses. You know, there's a mm -hmm. good way or bad way of doing it. And again, reaching beyond just the 13 council members. So those would be two examples where we wrote it in in a permissive way. Mm -hmm. We can do this when we need to do it and then endorse that we should do it whenever we and need so to. So these do would it. be new tools in the toolbox Absolutely. for the council to engage among themselves, but also to engage with interested and perhaps even expert parties Absolutely. from outside of the council. And it could be staff of the town, it could be residents of the town, it could be other members of other committees Absolutely. in town that you would bring in. You could bring in someone from another town where the other town has done something that we want to know more about mm -hmm. um, and we need that. And we all know what Amherst is like. I mean, we have mm -hmm. such a rich population in terms of knowledge and past participation mm -hmm. and we didn't want to lose that uh, ability to tap into people who have been long-time participants or also new participants but know a lot yeah. beyond what we might already and This know. is all very consistent with um, what you and I talked about in an earlier show when maybe even your first appearance here how important the process of engagement was to Absolutely. you. And uh, Alyssa you've had so many years of experience in town government uh, so you've operated under and seen lots of different types of meetings, types of activities and how structure is critical to making sure that people know what to expect. Right. And so could you talk a little bit about some of the things that you were working on and focusing on in, in the committee uh, to ensure that people would, there would be very crisp and clear rules of procedure so that everybody understood that this was going to be an open and fair debate and process. Yeah, I was just, it just buzzed through my head as we were talking about this. Like, we could have, have this been a much more dramatic sort of show. Like, what was it like developing the rules of procedure? <laughs> <laughs> because it was rather dramatic on some occasions. And well, I bet partly, there was some pretty. Uh, there were some strong feelings yeah, on many sides. And, and a lot of it is because I, for example, have been doing this a long time. Mm -hmm. Three of the members had not been doing it at all. At all. And so yeah. they did an immense amount of research. And I would then push back and say, well, I know the words say that, but what's the practical application of that? But yet, we didn't want to box ourselves in either, because yeah. the last thing any of us wants is you know, a little box that we ha are forced to work within. So trying to express the kinds of things we were trying to express in words that somehow made sense to not only the five of us, but then to the entire town council. Because that's another part of the push-pull associated with the work we did, is how much does the full town council entrust to a subcommittee? Because we are all, just to be clear to everyone out in the world, we are all meeting at least 12 hours a week in meetings right now. So we're for a part-time council job, much less preparation, research, but was all done outside of those meetings. So how much do you entrust the subcommittee versus the full rules committee? And so we, we went to the full council a couple of times and said, this is where we're at. These are some particularly interesting parts, and Kathy can talk more about that. And then you know these are the highlights, because it's a lot to process but also in terms of giving people the tools, as we talked about earlier. So, for example, a tool that I'd found really useful at town meeting for many years was the idea of no audible displays of approval or disapproval. And the reason for that was not to quash people or make it be super formal, but because even though 
it might seem like 85% of the audience thinks something's an amazing idea and wants to cheer for it, there could be that 5 or 3 or 2% of people who feel really quashed by the enthusiasm that's displayed if there's hooting and hollering, and then maybe are less willing to bring something of theirs up in the future because they feel like they're not being represented or they're or not being respected. Or even to speak up on that particular issue right. as it's being debated in, in the uh, in the town meeting at that point, and right. it could be the town council. But if you haven't actually seen that happen, which I did see happen in town meeting when it spontaneously would erupt and the moderator would say, okay, we all agreed that we don't have public displays, um, people who hadn't seen that worried that that meant we were somehow quashing people's enthusiasm. And the last thing we want to do is that, right? We want people to feel fully engaged in our... So we went back and forth as to how do we describe that? How do we talk about divisiveness versus enthusiasm versus engagement versus rules that are just seem to be for the sake of rules, which we... we are, this is Amherst. We would avoid that. And um, it, it went back and forth in terms of what we felt on our group and what at the committee so, level. At the committee level, and then when it went back to council, and so it went back and forth a couple of different ways before it, it got finalized as a version of what we had been using at town meeting, just to give another tool to the president or the presiding officer of mm -hmm. any of our groups. And so, but it, it just goes to show that there, there can be a huge amount of difference of opinion. We're all trying to get to the same place. And just how do you actually codify that in a way that feels comfortable to people right. that doesn't feel draconian? Yeah, and some of these things are pretty cut and dry. How many votes do we need? Right. You know, it's either X, Y, or Z. Right. Pick one. Right. It's not in the middle of X and Y. It's yes. one of them. But here's a set of ideas that involve judgment. Absolutely. And, um, and the sensitivity to uh, trying to encourage engagement and uh, allow people to express themselves, both as a speaker and as an audience, how do you balance those? So you, you went back and forth four times Something between like the committee that. and the yeah. council, but you ultimately figured out a path forward, and that's that been incorporated workable. in the rules. Uh, any other uh, examples of things that you were particularly focused on? Well, I in particular just had um, what I thought was a very simple suggestion about the fact that we had already informally agreed that we would have our president serve as spokesperson to the press. And that made some people uncomfortable to put that in writing because it felt like maybe it would prevent other people from speaking, which in all reality, in my experience, is the appropriate thing to do. You do ask the president to be, or the chair in the past, to be the spokesperson. And then they may say, you're the expert on the capital plan. Please do all Speak the speaking about the yeah. capital plan. <laughs> it, it doesn't force that person to be the expert on everything, but that's the go-to person mm -hmm. for everything. And people were uncomfortable with putting that in writing for fear that it would put not necessarily this president, but a president in the position of just having all the control and feeling the burden of all that and not feeling like they could delegate. So then do you say, or their designee. And so finally it just got scrapped. Mm -hmm. But it's in a list of follow-up items. And so that's one of the really interesting things to me about this whole ebb and flow of process here is that now that rules of procedure, yay, got our work done weeks ahead of time, which was amazing That's given great. how much work it was. Yeah. And it was really starting to, Kathy was an excellent taskmaster in terms of keeping us on schedule. And then we got done early, is that now we have a list of things that the governance organization and legislation, GOL, not goal, GOL, um, committee can continue to work on and say, well, they, lo they looked at this what might we consider in the future so it can be a living document that we continue to tweak over time and that press issue may be one that fits in well once we talk about it more as to who does what when. Great. Now, and I, Kathy, other um, no, uh, things that just you... Just a little bit on the uh, process, because uh, yeah. Alyssa jumped in. Um, we, because it's a long document, when we went back to the council, they all got the full document. And what we did was highlight, little yell, literally yellow, literally. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. the areas that we weren't the same as all towns. You know, so it wasn't that no yeah. other city or town did that, it this way, but that pay attention to this. And then areas where we didn't agree as five people, mm -hmm. we went ahead and put two options in, saying mm -hmm. we, we are a recommending committee. We're not a decision-making committee. So if there were two sets of ideas that were happening in our small group, the larger group of 13 should also hear those ideas. Mm -hmm. um, and so we coded those blue when we went in, just on here two ways. And I thought it was a very healthy example going forward. 
because we're in trust. We're going to rely a lot on our committees mm -hmm. to be re delegated work. We're, we're referring it to a committee, but we don't want them to make final decisions on key actions without at least us knowing that there were two or three ways of going on this. Mm -hmm. And there was not one clear way, but even, you know, there were three people that like this, two who like that. We should hear hear that without having to go to every meeting. So I thought it set a precedent. I'm so where you... there's consensus on a point, you might not put that in. Absolutely. But where there's a division, you might highlight the couple of two or three options and give some context for how people thought about those and leave it to the council to understand that there wasn't unanimity on something. And what I liked about this is often when you think of a policy that is going forward or not, you have the I don't like it or I do like it mm -hmm. group. But if you said I, I do like it if the following, so it could be this way or that yes. way, it wasn't that we didn't like the idea. It was yeah. there to, I think it's a healthier way of ultimately getting to yes, mm -hmm. um, you know, unless you just hate it. But, but and it, so that there is buy-in, um, and, and you know, people think compromise is a dirty word in politics, but it's in the nature of the enterprise. You're going to have conflicting views. Rather than do nothing, you figure right. out what's a path where there's enough common ground upon which we can build a solution. And so that's part of what you're doing here. Yeah, and it was, a, this is one, it was an ad hoc committee we had a deadline, mm -hmm. meet this deadline, and as you said at the beginning, we go out of business. You know, mm -hmm. there is now a document, um, but it is a living document. And one of the things we wrote in is that we can change it. You know, if the mm -hmm. majority of the council wants to amend it and change it, some towns said it had to be a super majority. We just mm -hmm. said if there is a majority that something's not working, we want to add something or subtract something because mm -hmm. we, or we want to expand a definition whatever it might be. We want to make it um, easy to do, but at least revisit it once a year. So we've had at least once a year we should come back and take a look at mm -hmm. um, how, we're, how, how are we doing based on how we said we wanted to behave uh -huh. and, and act. So uh, you see annual reviews in the legislature, for example, the state legislature, because the uh, terms are two years, on swearing in day, a set of temporary rules is adopted, which are the rules from the last term, and a rules committee is named to review the rules and make recommendations, and usually within two to three months, a permanent set of rules for that term are adopted, and it's usually 95 or 98 percent of it is identical to what to it was what before, had, yeah. Yeah. so it's not like you're changing with the wind. But as circumstances arise, things like uh, what do you do about technology in the chamber now that everybody's got an iPad and a, and a cell phone? Absolutely. That was not anticipated 100 years ago. So you, you adapt with the time. So um, the way you're seeing this is that this will be an annual exercise. At least to come back and take a look at it. At a minimum, mm -hmm. we've specified in our document the committees of the council. So mm -hmm. we've gone out of business, but we have five standing committees. Mm -hmm. It will trigger, if we didn't do it automatically anyway, it will trigger, how is this working? Okay. You know, we've got a committee with a huge domain or jurisdiction. Should it be two? Is it, mm -hmm. is it working well? Yeah. Um, is and the committees are written into the rules? They're written into the rules, and we made it a little bit easy on ourselves by just writing down, here are the committees, mm -hmm. and then putting their charges in an appendix, appendix. or cross-referencing. Yes. So okay. to the extent we want to go back and expand, limit, subdivide charges, we can go ahead and mm -hmm. instead of going to the whole document. Right. But, but we tried to make it... The, the living document term Melissa used, yeah. it would be a way of c coming back, and so you might come back and just look at that. Yeah. Um, the whole issue of public comments came up very early, that uh -huh. yes, it's required, but we're under an operating 
framework now, and two things that were interesting at the very beginning, it was, a, do you just want general public comments? Or if there is a new issue that we're going to be deliberating on, do you want to take specific comments to this the first time we talk about it? Mm -hmm. So we've got a, an agenda that states we will always take public comments, and then we will have a, an additional a time permitting public comment period. That was put in specifically to allow for people to know, oh, they're getting to this at 8 o'clock at night, and that's what I want to talk about. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't have a more general. The other thing we did right at the get-go is people said, try to be as welcoming and informal as possible. And we decided we would all call each other by our first names. And is that in the rules that you're sticking with it? Yeah, we put it in a sentence. And someone said, let's just write it in because it was popular. <laughs> I mean, people actually wrote us, hooray, you know, sometimes yeah. I don't even know how to pronounce your last name. <laughs> so it's Kathy I can deal with, yeah, but right, you know, yeah. who knows how this is. And right now we're really lucky. We have 13 different names. Yeah. <laughs> so it's, we don't have... That works. <laughs> it, it works right now. And, you know, we asked our president, would she be willing to be, instead of president, um, which has such a wonderful title, would she will be willing to be Lynn? And she said, oh, yes. You know, so it was, a, it was something we did right at the beginning, which, which had a good feeling and to it's, it. It's, yeah. It still seems to be working well. Yeah, yeah and I heard a counselor addressing, uh, speaking about another counselor and reference counselor Pam. Right. Right. Well, I, I had to laugh when we wrote oh, that wait, down. No, I was no. thinking of you. Counselor Dorothy. <laughs> right. Sorry, I'm sorry. Right. It was not Counselor Pam, it was Counselor, Counselor Dorothy. Dorothy. Right. And so, because it was the first name, yeah. and I had not heard that before, and I said, oh, that works. Yeah. Right. And, and actually, it's usually just Dorothy. It's not usually Counselor right. Dorothy. So but we still struggle setting, sometimes because yeah. we're still getting used yeah. to it. But we did think of you and your suggestions because we realized the Great General Court is more formal. And we did take into account what you suggested in terms of it perhaps being a bit of a distancing. I don't want to misspeak and mischaracterize yeah. your words, but a bit of a distancing thing. So it makes it easier to say, my esteemed colleague and, and Counselor To maintain Lassnam. decorum in and, an environment when people might otherwise uh, uh, degenerate to fisticuffs. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so we just went ahead and took the informal route and it seemed to be working and out. We working, said we got yeah. a lot of positive feedback. And all, as prescriptive as this charter is in comparison to our former form of government, yeah. where town meeting did not have to readopt its rules of behavior every year, they just were what they were according to the moderator, and then little tweaks might be made associated with the bylaw process. But unlike the Great and General Court that has to actually actively adopt something, we don't. In municipal government, basically, something continues along until you change it. Yeah. But because of the way we set it up with the appendices and, and treating it as a living document, we figure we'll be referring back to it on a regular basis and saying, what didn't we put in here? What's in here that's, create, that's too cumbersome that we need to rewrite a different way so that we're all understanding it and working from it? Because we have people of such a wide variety, and particularly as we bring in more people from the public to each of our different working groups, et cetera, th these are the roles that we're working under so they can see. That's great. And earlier you referenced the Gold Committee, GOL, yep. which is now the Committee of Jurisdiction for all matters relating to rules. Yep. And so uh, the future discussion about uh, going back and, and trying to resolve some of those questions where you had two ideas and left it to the future, some of those are going to now be looked at by the Gold Committee. And most of them, we, if, were if it's in writing, Yep. We resolved it. Okay. So as Alyssa said, in one instance, we remained silent rather mm -hmm. than put it in writing. Okay. And so it's some, a top to come back. And then I'll give another example. We, we have established there can be work groups, study mm -hmm. groups, that can include people beyond the council. Mm -hmm. we just, and then we hit, how do we set these up? Who does the appointment? Right. Can anyone just do them any time they mm -hmm. feel like? Mm -hmm. And we said, well, we need to think this through on how it might work and call a few towns that have these, you know, since we, um, that we don't want to all be in meetings all the time and we right. want to do them only when it's absolutely necessary, but it allows you to, uh, it's, it's short of a commission, you know, where you might say, this is a big idea, we're going to create a commission and have them report back. This would be something 
that doesn't rise quite to that to stature. That, yes, yes. But it wouldn't be long lived. You know, yes. it would be we want them to go back and It'd come be back in two months, two months, three months, whatever the time period yeah. is. Um, the best example I have of one we've had in the past with the old government is the marijuana committee that mm -hmm. Alyssa was on, yeah. which had a variety of people on it and was set up to wrestle with a particular thing that the town wanted, was go moving ahead on, but there could be, we don't know yet what issues, but that one is where GOL, government, will say, this, these are three different ways we could operate, and we'll come back and say exactly how this might work. So we, it's there, but it's just not there in its full um, details. And then the other thing to be clear on for our audience, of course, many of them are League of Women Voters members, so they totally understand this already, but <laughs> the rules of procedure are completely different than our bylaws. And so bylaw review is happening at this very time as we're speaking, yeah. too, because not only do you have to look at the town bylaws and do a find and replace for town meeting and select board, but the, there's more to it than that because there are changes in executive and legislative authority. And then there are also bylaws from 1939 that have never been revisited. Wow. So that's going to be a hu another huge piece of work. And so we have an ad hoc committee working on that too, but that's also going to be under GOL. And that'll work nicely together that GOL is the umbrella then for the rules that are our day-to-day -day operating procedures. And over here are the bylaws. And so it's just a central place where everybody will know that's where revisions can be made and the things that affect the running of the government are all being handled over there. So I think it'll be a lot clearer to people as this evolves over time, who does what and when, and then it will come back to the full council as they make recommendations. And I do really appreciate what Kathy said about the, this method of highlighting differences because again, we're doing, this is new. You know, town meeting didn't have committees that brought it things that were of town meeting so much in the, as opposed to the Historical Commission of the Planning right. Board. And so to be able to say, we thought about this in depth, we had public sessions about it because everything, unlike the Great and General Court, subject to open meeting law, we can't just hammer it out in back rooms, we have to do it all in public and then provide those options to the full council to make the full decision. That's great. Well, job well done. And uh, as you say, you got it done early. Yay. And here we are, we aren't even six months into the new government. and. Uh, you did all of that work, and we have now a, quote, permanent set of rules that are available for review and revision at any time along the way when it makes sense to do so. So thank Absolutely. you both for being here well, and so for the for good work us. that you guys are doing. Yeah, and thanks to the and, League. Uh, I mean, it's pretty amazing. Yeah. I mean, we said, you're going to have a half hour on rules and procedure. <laughs> oh, my and, goodness. And yeah. there's so much that's interesting yeah. in there. <laughs> And I hope, uh, I yeah, hope everybody right. learned a little yeah. bit here. Yeah. But again, it all goes back to the values that are inherent yes. in the charter, which is a transparent and engaged process. Absolutely. So 100%. thank you all for being with thank us. You, and uh, we'll look forward to uh, having another conversation with another group soon. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you, Stan.